Uh, this is about a 39 or a 40 Howard. Uh, this is a short wave, full range band spread, main tuner, uh, the pitch. The next one up, telephone set, this is a Mark V telephone set with a miniature telegraph key attached to it. So as well as connecting from line to line, camp to camp, you can send Morse code with a miniature key. Next one up, similar type, Brit. This one is called, let me get the back here, a major in the British Army invented this particular type. I don't have the name, but it also has a removable miniature telegraph key. This particular one is manufactured as a short wave from leftover B-17 radios and equipment. The earphones, of course, are war dated. All of this equipment here is war dated, as well as the binoculars, the glass, and so on and so on. What would be the range of some of these radios? How far could they broadcast? You could broadcast from France to London. Okay. And on a good day. On a good day. Some of the smaller units, we don't have a suitcase. The suitcase model was used primarily by the Special Operations Executive, the SOE group, which was very similar to the American OSS. And they had little suitcase types that uh, you could actually walk past the Germans in a regular suitcase. They wouldn't know it was there. Those were used at intermittent times, given signals with special code books to be able to uh, you know, let them know when to bring in some supplies, that you had arrived there properly, or the partisan activity that was taking place uh, in, in the area. Right now, we're doing Mediterranean. That's why we have the Yugoslavs with us. The Yugoslav partisans are next to us. The SAS was kind of unique in that um, they kind of controlled a group of partisans, a number of different groups. We had one detachment of French Foreign Legion, one of the only French Foreign Legion units that did not surrender, that fought with the SAS in North Africa. So this is represented as a brigade headquarters, and we'll have Yugoslavs, we'll have French, we have Belgians, uh, all, uh, let's say, partisans. And some of the equipment over here, the demolition equipment, is equipment that the young ladies who are trained in multiple languages would use these to train the individuals. Uh, the partisans would learn how to operate the stem gun. They'd learn how to manufacture different types of weapons. This one is a clam bomb. The clam is actuated with a timing pencil that actually had an acid with a nitrocellulose disc. The acid would slowly eat away at a given rate. You could tell how much time you had by the number and the color of rings that are on the timing pencil. C2 inside, magnets throughout, and a steel cover. The partisan would walk up, slap it on a jeep, or put it in a factory. Turn the timing pencil for the amount of time you wanted, and it should explode. This particular one was the idea of a fellow named William Stevenson, who was called a man, uh, the, uh, the gentleman who was intrepid. I can't think of the whole thing right now. A man called intrepid, that's right. And he was really the father of the special operations executive and trained Bill Donovan and the OSS uh, in the United States. This one is a manure bomb. And you have C2 packed into manure with a detonator, put it in the middle of the roadway. Germans would come, roll over it, blow up. After they got wise to it, they'd have to get out of there to check to make sure which one was real, which one wasn't. Then you'd ambush them. So it's kind of a neat thing to have around. Smelly, but a neat thing to have around. Next one up, pinup girl. This pinup girl is used by the cockle shell heroes, the special boat squadron or the Royal Marines coming in a rubber boat in the evening to enemy uh, maritime shipping. This would go under the water line of the ship. There would be a detonator that would fire this pin into the armor plate, lock it into position. These timers will be waterproof. You twist those, and you have, again, timing, minutes, hours, whatever you needed. This particular unit with the all-steel case was one of the first shape charges in that all the explosive force would come this way and blow 15 to 20 foot hole through armor plate. Then we have the dynamite, the C2 composition block, and so on. And of course, over here are the weapons. Are you interested in the weapons? Sure. Okay. Stem, the submachine gun. This would be the Mark II. The Mark I is the one down there with the longer barrel and the shred. That was probably about five. Sten has a 
32 round box magazine, 9 millimeter. Fires from the open bolt position. It's one of the most dangerous weapons in the round. That's why they put this little tab on here. When you're holding it, you must keep your fingers clear because when it fires from the open bolt, it'll cut your finger off. The early models did not have this, they really didn't need it. This model did, but again, they were dangerous. Firing from the open bolt, you could drop one, and it was loaded, it would fire. But the reason they were invented, the United States was shipping over through Lend Lease 1945, uh, pardon me, 45 caliber Thompson submachine guns. They were charging $45 a piece for them. The British government couldn't afford $45 a piece. This was invented in a bicycle factory and cost about $5 to manufacture. 550 rounds per minute, and again, 32 round magazine. Would that get overheated at all at that kind of clip? Sure, mm -hmm. replace the barrels and seal them out. Okay. Yeah. Throw that one out. Just toss it. That one you keep and unscrew it. This one goes bye bye. I'll let this gentleman tell you about the uh, Bren, the Bren gun here. Okay. Right. This is Trooper Volpe. This is the Bren 303 caliber machine gun. It's a light machine gun. It can also be used as a small automatic weapon. It um, fires the same amount of ammunition as that. Uh, it fires about 550 rounds a minute, the same rate of fire. But it shoots a uh, 303 caliber cartridge. Here, it's the same ammunition as the standard Lee Enfield rifle. It fires a, uh, from a 30 round box magazine and has a detachable barrel here for overheating. You usually place the barrel every 1500 rounds. Pull this lever up here, pull the barrel straight out, put a new barrel on, and you're set to go. And it's got a uh, foldable bipod up here, which we fold it up. It's got mounts for a tripod or a vehicle mount here. And the firing is very simple. All you have to do is just insert a magazine, pull back on the slide, close it, pull the trigger. Here's another interesting weapon for you. This is the Webley, which is the standby. It originally was in. Uh, 38. This particular is a 455 Webley, 455 caliber. You push the stirrup, open it. The head was shaved at the arsenal, so it would take 45 ACP. There's so many 45 caliber bullets coming in from the United States to Britain. It made sense since this was 455, the bore diameter is the same. So they invented the first really uh, clip. It was a uh, moon clip, so like a fast loader. You could put five or six ACPs, put them in, fire it. When you open the stirrup, it would kick it out, grab it, put it in your pocket, you take the shells out later, put the next clip in and go. Much faster than the Victory model. Victory model was so named because, again, this came from the United States. It's a Victory Smith & Wesson, but loaded one at a time. Typical 38 special. Not special, 38 Smith & Wesson cartridge. This gentleman over here is my armament specialist. And we have an assortment. There's a German grenade, American frag grenades, which again, you find a lot of equipment utilized by the SAS was American through Lend Lease and then through Swap later on. The Fairbairns here, these two are replicas. These two are original. This one's a Wilkinson sword. This one is a no will. And they're extremely expensive now in collector's items, so we go in the field to do a tactical, we'll take the cheaper ones here. Compass, the compass was found on the beach at Normandy. Still preservative on it. I started to clean, I said, no, don't think I will. But it's kind of neat. And it still works. Can I ask a question about the whole thing with the Webley? Sure. I have a 38. <laughs> <laughs> That way, I'll make it corner like that. Yeah. What does it look like in the pilot? Something like that. Well, you have a tank or weapon in your hand. You, you need, that needs to be tuned. Yeah, you need to go. Yeah, that's why I didn't shoot it. Yeah, the springs. This might be interesting to you, sir. Okay, just a second. Sure. 42 General Electric cardiogram x ray machine. It's actuated by a generator. They say it's portable, it weighs a ton. But it's a very, very rare piece. Most of the other medical equipment you see here is World War II. Uh, of course, we have our tea service set because we've got to go to battle with tea. Okay. 
We've got some of this stuff. My doctor is not.